she first told me about doing the luxury leave, and that was in 2015. I said to her, I said, but we are a poor country in the sense that we have people living at multiple levels, middle class. We have, I think, the third largest number of billionaires now in the world today. But essentially, we have the world's largest number of poor people. So I said to Ritu, how real is it and how relevant is it to have something called luxury league uh, in India? And now I'm going to ask Ritu to speak. Thank you, Prabha. I could have had nobody better than you to introduce me to talk about my work. Besides being a dear friend, you're also super intelligent. So it takes it's, it's very nice when someone who understands the pulse and the, and the real work behind all the effort. Thank you so much for being here with us. And it's um, a real privilege to be here with all of you because I love Goa. And this is the first time that I'm really doing some sort of work in Goa and uh, meeting all of you and um, getting what is my passion. From the day I started designing, or the day I, I launched my label, one thing was very clear. I'm a big India fan. So I come from an army background, from a very patriotic father who used to you know, instill in us the importance of loving our country. And that's where it all began. Because for me, it was the love for my country. And um, in many ways, I don't know if I'm as talented and with the kind of success that I got in India. So I suddenly found myself as a brand name in India. Maybe because there was a lack of other designers, but there was, Ritu Berry was a brand in India very, very quickly, within two, three years of me launching my brand. So I decided to challenge myself and I said, if I'm really that good, I better be able to do something in the fashion capital like Paris. So I went there and challenged myself and I, I said I'm going to do a fashion show in Paris and you know prove that I'm really as good as my fellow Indians think I am. So I, uh, I, I was in this amazing city where uh, it's, it's very daunting for a young Indian. And you didn't speak French. And I didn't <laughs> speak French but I never felt the lack of um, not being French or speaking French amongst the French and at that point of time which is way back in 1995. Um, the French were not as friendly towards non-French-speaking -French people. Oh, yeah. So they were, they were very snobbish, they were very proud of their, uh, their, themselves. And um, if, if it was an Indian who's normally typecast as a copycat, you know, which is what I, I had to face a lot of in France, a lot of people said, oh, Indian designers who can do embroidery at half the price. She's going to copy our work and she's going to get it done at half the price. So it was a real challenge to make them accept me and say, no, I'm here for the real passion of fashion, you know. So, um, well, 30 years, uh, which just flew, I did a lot of fashion. I, I was heading the French, French fashion brand. So a lot of dreams came true. Um, I, I think I worked very hard, but I'm destiny's child. It was meant to be. And one day, I was in Paris, now coming back to the concept of the luxury league, and I was at a luxury conference where there were a lot of important brands, you know, Louis Vuitton, Van Cleef and Arbel, everybody was there. And everyone was talking about how important luxury is from different parts of the world. And I kept waiting for India's turn. I really do believe that India is true luxury, you know. Whatever we have, you know, I'm going to start off with my belief that uh, we are an inspiration to the world, whether it's in the field of science, whether it's in the field of art, whether it's in, in the field of fashion. There have been so many designers that have done collections inspired by India. Correct. So India is an inspiration, but when this conference was going on, there was no mention of India. There was no talk about the, the beautiful Patiala jewels, the, the you know, the luxury, luxurious life of our Maharajas and Maharani's, our palaces. India is a, is a really old civilization and we were the richest civilization in the world at one time. I mean, 
the very fact that the Kohinoor comes from India, we've got to claim our, uh, our heritage, you know. So when throughout the conference there was no mention of India, I got a bit rebellious and I said, how can they not understand that India is true luxury and India needs to be looked at with more respect? So I came back to India and I decided that I'm going to start a, a, commit, a club of people where I'm going to promote the luxury from India. And I, I realized that if we need to go anywhere, we've got to have the support of the government. Because the government needs to understand that luxury is not a bad word, you know, which I found very hard. It's been five years now. I launched in 2015, so today is my, this is going to be the sixth edition. So I try to explain to everyone that khadi is luxury. Khadi is handmade, hand woven, hand spun, zero carbon. It's the most, everyone's talking about, about uh, sustainability. Khadi is yeah. as green as it gets, you know. Yeah. It comes from India. Mm -hmm. And if we were to claim the fact that Khadi is a national fabric of India, it's unique. You don't find two dhans that are the same. And the world has to understand the uniqueness of Khadi. But we Indians don't understand. How many of us here in the audience is wearing Khadi? Oh, you are? One. And it's a lady there who is complaining that Khadi has become upmarket now. Oh, Khadi has become upmarket. So yeah. everything is upmarket. It's how, you, it's how you put it together. It's how you use it. And why should Khadi not be upmarket? There are weavers sitting, weaving it by hand. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of effort. And if you go abroad and you go to buy something, the price of that object is double or triple because it's handmade. Correct. So khadi is handmade. Look at the haldi milk. We talk about haldi milk. And now you go to America, you have these bottled turmeric uh, latte. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so you come, I mean, you've grown up with your grandparents, grandmother telling you, chot lag gai, haldi dhutpiyo. Am I right? Have any of us claimed that? Have any of us thought of that and, and said this is the, the this is the pride of our country? In Goa, you have virgin coconut oil. Yeah. I take bottles and bottles back to Delhi whenever I don't use any other coconut oil but coconut oil from Goa. But in the global world, have we been able to say coconut virgin coconut oil from Goa? No. That's what we so that's what luxury is for me. Why did you decide to do the Luxury League in Goa? So when I think of luxury, for me luxury is sleep. Because you see, luxury is different thing for different people. It's definitely not a very expensive bag or a very expensive pair of shoes. Luxury is something that you can really enjoy. So if I'm sleep deprived, Luxury for me is sleep because then I can sleep and Goa is the place where I really sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> and to tell you the truth, this for me Goa is my favorite city in, in India. And I realized that the way everyone lives in Goa, they really live life, you know. Mm. From the air that they breathe, from the food that they eat, from the city which is so beautiful. Um, I have a beautiful small home in a, in a village called Sukur and I have to tell you, it is my dream home. When I, when I get to my house in Sukur, I don't step out. I don't need to go to a beach, I don't need to go to a restaurant. I'm in, I'm in a very luxurious situation, even though it's a small little Portuguese home. So I think luxury has different connotations for different people. For me, luxury is when you're authentic, when you're true to who you are, you're able to enjoy your life. So it's a really luxurious life for me in Goa. And I said, why not? Because people here are, are so talented. There is, you know, there is this uh, shoemaker I discovered in, uh, in Goa mm. called Janota, who does handmade these folk shoes. He's a very old shoemaker in Goa. And I, I came across so many uh, people with yeah. so much talent, with so much possibility of doing global work. So the idea is to find the right talent, whether it's an artist or a craftsman or it's an embroiderer or a designer, 
and introduce them to global personalities and try to see different possibilities of tourism, increasing employment, increasing um, businesses. So I thought Goa would be a great, a great place. And we are here doing this.